Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Travel Journal with me. After an incredible time in Morocco, our family adventure continued as we crossed back into Spain and made our way to the heart of Andalusia, which is Seville. Day 10 of our 16-day group tour, we checked out of Hotel Farah in Tangier and boarded the ferry back to the Spanish mainland. The journey continued as we made our way towards the capital of Andalusia, the historic city of Seville, where we would spend the next two nights. From the moment we arrived, Seville just hits different. The warm Andalusian sun, the historic architecture, and the lively places, it all whisks us away to another time and place. Day 11, and it was time to dive into the heart of Seville with the help of our knowledgeable tour guides. We started our day in Maria Luisa Park, marveling at the tiled fountains, pavilions, and lush palm trees that make it a masterpiece of landscape design. Before we proceed to our next destination, let's journal about our ferry trip from Morocco back to Spain and our time at the Maria Luisa Park. I'm using this Traveler's Notebook Camel by the Traveler's Company with a 003 unruled or blank insert. I have a photo taken inside the ferry, the restaurant where we had a stopover for lunch on day 10, and photos of the park. To begin, I'm adding a decorative accent at the bottom of our spread using this strip of map design tape from the Pepin Press Historical Map Sticker Album. Next, I'll stamp the word Sevilla at the top of the tape using this large alphabet stamp. Since there is an empty space after the word, I'll stamp this Traveler's Company postage stamp using blue stamp ink to fill the gap and add a touch of wanderlust to our page. To add depth, I'm shading the letters using an olive green zig for the Biore brush marker.
While arranging the photos on the spread, I realized that I wanted to have more writing space. To fit several photos on this spread without sacrificing journaling room, I'm going to attach some photos back to back and include them as a tip-in. This way, we can include more memories without overcrowding the pages. To decorate our Maria Luisa Park page, I'm using a garden-themed clear stamp. To correct the stamping mistake, I'm stamping this fountain clear stamp again on a cream-colored paper. For the parts that were not stamped correctly, I'll shake them with a black pencil to create a seamless loop. I'll cut out the stamped image and use it to cover up our mistake. Next, I'll use a stamp with the word garden to add more decoration to our park page. Next, I'll be using an alphabet stencil to write Maria Luisa Park next to it. document the date of our visit, I am using a roller date stamp. This adds a classic timeless feel to our travel journal. Finally, let's shade the words Maria Luisa Park using a brown brush marker to make the title stand out. Now, using a Twisby Echo fountain pen, let's start journaling about our experiences. I love this medium warm brown fountain pen ink, which is perfect for our vintage themed travel pages. The rich color complements the earthy tones of the stamps and the tape we've used. Now, let's take a look at our finished spread, which is a lovely mix of memories, photos, and decorative elements that perfectly captured the essence of our journey from Morocco back to Spain and our time at the Maria Luisa Park. From Maria Luisa Park, we made our way to their breathtaking Plaza de España, a half-circle of stunning Renaissance Revival buildings that left me in awe. As we approached the plaza, we were struck by its sheer size and grandeur. 
The plaza is huge and the buildings are adorned with intricate tilework, showcasing scenes from the Spanish history and each of Spain's 49 provinces. We could have spent hours exploring every nook and cranny of this architectural marvel, but our journey was just beginning. Our next stop was the incredible Real Alcazar, a royal palace that has served as a residence for Spanish kings for centuries. As we stepped through the entrance, we were immediately transported to a world of architectural splendor. The palace is a stunning example of Mudihar style, a unique blend of Islamic and Christian design elements. We explored the ornate halls and courtyards, each one more breathtaking than the last. Now let's document our time at Plaza de España and Real Alcazar. Just like in our previous spread, I'll be adhering some photos back to back and adding them as a tip in to create more writing space. In doing so, we can include more pictures without sacrificing room for journaling. This technique also adds a fun interactive element to our travel journal. While browsing a brochure of Seville, I found some photos of real Alcazar and a map of the sites we visited that I would like to add to our page. To give the map a more authentic travel-worn feel, I'm tearing the edges instead of cutting them straight. This creates a softer, more organic look that complements the vintage aesthetic of our journal. Then, to cover the bleed through from our stamping on the previous page, I'll be pasting a map of Spain on the left side of our spread. This not only solves the bleed through issue but also provides context for our civil adventures.
Using the same alphabet stencil from earlier, I'm adding the words Plaza de España next to our photo of this magnificent landmark. To maintain consistency with our previous lettering, I'll shade the words using the brown brush marker, which adds depth and dimension to the text. Next, let's use a round sticker from the Pep and Press European Tile Sticker Album to add an accent to our left page. The intricate tile design complements the Spanish architecture we encountered during our visit. create a decorative border on our right page, I'm using this strip of tape from the same Pep and Press sticker book. The tape's design features a beautiful tile pattern that perfectly captures the essence of Seville's architectural beauty. Now let's journal about our experiences. The warm brown tones of the ink tie in beautifully with the vintage colors of the stickers and tape creating a cohesive and visually appealing spread. So here's our finished spread. The tip-in photos, torn map edges, and decorative accent come together to create a truly unique and personalized record of our adventure that day. Next, let's move on to capturing the other important sites of Seville that we saw during our tour. The cathedral and its iconic La Giralda bell tower. 
Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take photos of these landmarks during our trip, but I found images of Seville's historic monuments and the Giralda Pell Tower in the travel brochure I collected. To incorporate these images into our travel journal, I'll carefully cut them out and arrange them on the page in a visually appealing manner. By using images from the brochure, we can still document these significant sites even though we don't have personal photos. To add decoration and visual interest to our page, I'm using a large circle sticker from the Pepin Press European Tile Sticker Album. The intricate tile design of the sticker complements the architectural beauty of the cathedral and bell tower, creating a cohesive and stylish look. In the brochure, I also found a text description of these two sites that provides valuable information and context. To make this text stand out and integrated seamlessly into our journal, I've decided to paste it onto a piece of vintage design scrapbook paper. By layering the text on top of the decorative paper, we create a unique and eye-catching element that draws attention to the historic significance of these monuments. After a full day of exploring, we ended our day in Seville with a passionate flamenco show at El Patio Sevillano. The music, the dancing, the energy, it was the perfect embodiment of the spirit of Andalusia. To journal about our unforgettable flamenco experience, I'm using a combination of the photos I took during the show and some stunning images I found in the brochure. By incorporating both personal and professional photos, we can create a spread that truly captures the essence of this passionate Spanish art form. Next, I'll arrange the photos on the spread in a collage style layout, experimenting with different placements and sizes until I find a composition that feels balanced and engaging. To create a sense of depth and texture, I'll add some of the images slightly overlapping them. This technique adds visual interest and draws the eye across the page. the collage together and enhance the flamenco theme, I'll incorporate some decorative elements reminiscent of Spanish culture. Again, I'm using a strip of tape with a European tile design. These subtle touches will reinforce the overall theme and create a cohesive look. In the spaces between the photos, I'll use my trusty fountain pen to jot down my thoughts, 
and observations about the flamenco show. By combining my journaling with the collage of photos, I'll create a rich multidimensional record of this unforgettable experience. The spread not only preserves the memories of this enchanting evening, but also serves as a testament to the enduring power and beauty of this iconic Spanish art form. As we come to the end of this journal entry, I can't help but reflect on the incredible memories we've made in Seville. Every moment has been a treasure to document and cherish. Looking at these pages, I'm struck by the power of travel journaling to preserve not only the sights and sounds of a place, but also the emotions and insights we experience along the way. Each carefully placed photo, each decorative accents, and each heartfelt word serves as a reminder of the joy and wonder we encountered on this unforgettable journey. To my fellow travel enthusiasts and journal keepers, I have a question for you. What tips would you offer to someone who is new to travel journaling and looking to start their own practice? Looking forward to your response in the comment section below. If you're looking for more inspiration and ideas for your own travel journey in practice, I encourage you to visit my travel journal playlist. Happy journaling and happy travels!